Hi, everybody. Welcome to Mark's Backyard Birds on the road today. And we're kind of in a makeshift studio here. So we're, uh, but we're going to get this recorded and up for you. And hopefully you will enjoy it as much as you usually do. But, uh, you know, we get, I get a lot of requests about uh, learning bird songs. You know, when I do my bird hikes and that's a big part of uh, my birding is by ear and, and identifying birds uh, and knowing the ones that and separating out the common ones from the ones that are, are passing through. And uh, it's a really, really great way to learn and expand your appreciation for nature is learning bird songs. But it's not easy. I mean, and I've been doing this for 40 years. And so it, it's second nature to me. But a lot of people who come on my bird hikes uh, and we start, it's, they're, they're, it's early in their bird watching uh, hobby. And they are like, how do you know all this? How do you know that? Well, again, don't ask me to fix a car. But you know, when it comes to knowing birds, I've been doing this for 40 years. So, uh, And I know that when I learned birds I, I, in college, we had we were required to learn so many birds there. Um, but, you know, it wasn't nearly 9,000. Uh, know, we just had to ha learn a handful of them. Uh, maybe a 30, I think, or 30 or 40 that summer we had to learn them. But it really helped me uh, whenever I started, we had a record player and a, and a, a big old album and we recorded the one off of there on little cassettes that we, we needed to learn and then we could study them. Um, but it helped me because my friend John, who was in class with me, he knew most of the bird songs that we needed to already because his parents were a big bird watcher. So one of the great things, you know, it, it's when you go out and you hear a bird and you're trying to learn it, it always helps to have that person that... Uh, can say yes, that is a cardinal. You know, yes, that is a chickadee, uh, and and it helps you to to, to remember better. Well, not everybody is they, has that to back them up. Someone to be there and to learn that from. It's great if you do, but one one of the wonderful things in, uh, that's about technology, and if you have a cell phone or a smartphone, you have that buddy like I did with John Hammond with you all the time. Um, this is an app from the Cornell Lab of Ornithology called Merlin. And Merlin has uh, it is an app that will help you identify birds, and you can enter, uh, you know, size and shape and things like that. If you want to visually, if you want to describe it and and try to come up with a list, and he'll give you it'll give you pictures, and you go, oh yeah, it was that one. But the, what I'm tonight's program is all about bird songs, and one of the options in the Merlin app is sound ID. So you push the sound ID button on the opening sound ID on the opening menu, and you just hit the record button. But now you're outside in your backyard or wherever in your park, or wherever you are, and birds are singing. And as that bird sings, now it's not 100%, and it's not infallible. And traffic noise can mess with it, and you know loud noises and things like that. But I'm telling you, this is a really wonderful learning tool. So You'll, you'll hear that bird sing, and next thing you know, it pops up on there, a picture and a name that says Northern Cardinal. And then, you know, the Carolina Wren sings, and boop, it pops up on the screen. So it's a great way for you to learn them, like, oh, that was the Cardinal. You know, that was the Carolina Wren. And it, 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 I, I just can't, rep, you know, recommend any app more than Merlin when it comes to learning bird songs. Now, again, you know, once you get, you're bitten by the hobby in my program tonight, I titled that, you know, learn these 10 birds first kind of thing, because you want to start somewhere and you want to. OK, let me start doing that and do it looking up Blue Jay. So you all, we all have to start somewhere. And the best way and the best place is to start with the birds right in your backyard the birds that you are going to hear most often. And what happens is when you start learning this, this system, you, the, these bird songs, these will lead you to other species of birds. Because once you have learned the blue jay call, once you've learned the robin call, once you've learned these some of these basic birds as you hear repeatedly, when you're out somewhere else and you hear a bluebird, and I don't have bluebird on the list tonight, but when you hear a bluebird, you'll go, wow, that kind of sounds like a robin. Boom. 
you're, you're expanding because they're both in the thrush family and they have thrush light songs. So learning the basics is, is, is what we're going to talk about tonight. And we're going to give you some tips on that and help you, it will help you get started so that, you know, again, download this app, take a hike, you know, at your local uh, nature trail or you know, nature center and, and it, you'll be off and running when it comes to learning bird songs. So the first one I'm going to say, and I know a lot of people go, oh, I just don't know any bird songs. Believe me, you're going to realize, oh, yeah, I do know that bird song tonight. So let's get started. We're going to start with, ooh, I think that's not the one I wanted to start with. We, we're going to start with the Blue Jay because – most everybody, I mean, they're one of those widespread birds in North America, and it's a bird that is very noisy. It calls a lot, and people are very familiar with them. Uh, and no matter, you know, well, I mean, I guess there's some parts, so you may be watching, and I'm sorry if you're in an area that doesn't have blue jays, but uh, most everybody who watches this program does have them. So, and the one thing I love about blue jays is to give you an example that they are not, um, they don't just have one call. I love it that, that, that some birds say their name, and blue jays are a prime example of a bird that says its name. So the typical one, and by the way, the app I'm using to play songs is the Sibley app, which again is my favorite um, app for your phone, uh, for bird watching and learning the, 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 it, with the pictures and everything in it. Um, that You can't record on this and identify it like you can on Merlin, but this is, it has the birds' uh, songs with the pictures on there for you. So when I'm, I'm a, so I'll be playing different songs off of the app. So that's where these come from tonight. So again, the Blue Jay says his name. Oh, that's the hawk. Sorry. Jay. People think Jay, Jay, Jay. J, J, and that's a lot. That's what I hear when I hear them calling. But like I said, the Blue Jays do more than one call. And one of the things they're famous for is imitating a hawk. And people say, oh, they do it to run off the birds from the fur bird feeder. So when they come in, they, they have the food for themselves. And that was that one I mistakenly played first. Here you go. That very much sounds like a red-shouldered hawk. <laughs> and Blue Jays do that. And then another song, like one thing they do is the... It's called the bell call. But of all of those, all I want to try to retain and um, learn is the J. So... I started with the Blue Jay because most everybody knows that song. They know that call. And one of the things that we're going to talk about the differences in songs and calls, birds communicate different things. They, the songs are generally what the males sing to attract the female. Calls are uh, vocalizations they make to communicate between uh, themselves and, and other jays and, and, of course, for other birds, too. So there's, there's a little bit of difference there. But tonight we're just talking about the song. So, And then Blue Jay, you know, they... They're a fascinating bird. They are absolutely one of it, one of the ones you really want to learn how to identify. Let's see. The next one I brought up is the chickadee. Let's see. Let's get this one up here. The black cap chickadee, which is I know that a lot of you in the south, where we're at right now, uh, there are Carolina chickadees here instead of black cap chickadees like there are at home in Missouri. So, but. One thing that they share in common, of course, is the the chickadee call when they say their name. So they both are the same whenever they're doing this call. Chickadee dee dee dee. Chickadee dee dee dee. So no matter the, the, the chickadee, Carolina or black cap chickadee, they're going to say that. They, I mean, they're going to, and they do, they're fussy little birds and they talk in little family groups and they're very chatty and you can hear that. And in the fall, I always talk about looking for and listening for chickadees when you're out bird watching because they're so smart, other birds follow them around to find food. 
So chickadee calls are one definitely you want to get to learn because they are, uh, they'll lead you to other birds and they're so smart. Now we talk about their song. This is a song of a black capped chickadee. Seesaw, seesaw. That's the song, but the chickadee dee dee is mainly what we're concentrating on. And so learn that song. You'll hear it in your backyard. I'm sure that they said they're one of the most common and most popular feeder birds in North America. But another, the cousin to them is the tufted titmouse. Now they are they are cousins, they're in the same group of birds, uh, but their calls are quite a bit different. Now some of their little uh, chip notes and vocalizations are, are pretty close together, but the, the classic song of the tufted titmouse is, we say Peter, Peter, Peter. Peter, Peter, Peter. Peter, 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 and they do sing it a lot. Now, again, titmice are oak-dependent species, so if you live in an area that you don't have a lot of oak trees, uh, but still, if you feed birds, titmice tend to come in and visit regularly, so they should be in the area. And my, the house that we live in now, first bird, uh, you know, whenever we went and looked at the house uh, that I heard singing in the yard was a tufted titmouse. That was my very yard bird for that the current house that I currently live in. So tufted titmouse, Peter, Peter, Peter. Easy way to remember that one. And then the next, uh, so those two cousins, and then I was going to move on to, let's see, got here. One that is also related to those guys, uh, but not as closely as the titmouse and the chickadee are together, is the white-breasted nuthatch. And the white-breasted nuthatch, plain and simple, just sounds like he's laughing at you. And this is one you, you, I bet you've heard in your yard. Let's see, let's do this one. Every time we hear that when we're out bird watching, somebody in the group will say, sounds like he's laughing at us. And that is exactly what they sound like. So white-breasted mud nut hatch, very common at your feeders, very common in, um, in, when you, in the eastern deciduous forest for sure, and I'd much further. I mean, I know they, they're very widespread. So uh, you should have those, and that's one you should definitely learn. All right, so... Up next is the male cardinal. The, the female sings as well. They'll sing duets together. Now, when you think the blue jay has a lot of different songs and think calls that it can sing, cardinals are the same thing. So I try to, when we talk about learning cardinal songs, we just try to learn the basics. And, it, and that is um, classically uh, probably the most famous of all. People say pretty, pretty, pretty. And, and like I say, he'll, and especially in the spring, whenever he's trying to attract a mate, uh, he'll start this and the female will join in with him and they'll still, they'll duet together. But that peer, 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 let's see, let's do another one. That is a classic Northern Cardinal call. And I bet you hear it a lot. And if you, you know, you say, again, people sometimes don't associate that song with the bird. That's what this program's all about tonight. So another of the more famous yard birds that we hear, and it's very unique. And I've always said that this song, that this bird song reminds me of today because it is really, really hot here in the South Carolina where we're at right now. Uh, but to me, the morning dove is a hot, lazy summer afternoon. That's what it sounds like to me. So, and without a doubt, the most confused a bird that, that with this are owls. People will think hear that call. And during the day, and they'll think, oh, there's an owl calling. Very deep, very throaty like owls. And it's very similar. But I know in some areas they call them rain crows. And that is uh, that if you hear them calling, it means it's going to rain. But 
Uh, there's, like I said, there's hot summer lazy afternoon. I'm sitting up on the on the peak of the roof of our how of a house, uh, singing like that. It's very very um, famous, and it's a sound of summer to me. So, all right, now the thrushes, the American robin, one of the most famous birds, the most popular birds in North America. These birds are very in the, in the thrush family. The whole thrush group which is bluebirds and hermit thrushes and several species, but they are known for their flutey like songs. And this is a classic Robin song. The mnemonic, you know, people put words to bird songs to help them remember. And the classic one for the Robin is cheerily cheerio. Cheerio, cheerio, and they they will sing and on and on and on and they're and like I said they're they're noisy birds they they do sing a lot so uh, the American robin and like I said when you learn to be the threat learn to identify that as a thrush and then you hear other songs like that out in out in the world and the, in, on nature you go oh that's very thrush like that sounds like a robin and there are other birds that sound like the robin there's you know, the rose breasted grosbeak sounds like a clearer uh, uh, robin, whereas a, a scarlet tanager or summer tanager sounds like, as we say, a, a robin with a, a sore throat. It's with raspy sound. So you'll, but once you get into bird watching, that learning these basics will pay off for you to, to learn those others. Now, one of the noisiest birds in North America, <laughs> it's also one of my famous birds, uh, um, if you remember the, the movie Shrek, and whenever he learned that the, that the she learned that the donkey could talk. Um, the and he, he says to Shrek, he can talk. And Shrek says, "Just getting him to shut up. That's a trick." <laughs> so that, this is that bird. Um, the Carolina Wren sings all the time. They at, at twelve months out of the year, especially in the morning. I mean, they don't sing twenty four hours a day. Nothing does. But the the, the Carolina Wren is very uh, vocal and it sings a lot. And I know there's be people in parts of uh, that may be watching this that don't have Carolina Wrens in the far north. Um, but as far as they've expanded so much over the years and uh, boy, maybe the whole eastern two thirds, uh, I think they're in now of, uh, of definitely North America. So or, uh, the lower 48s, maybe. I don't know if there may be some records up in Canada now. So, but listen to this song. In Roger Tory Peterson's field guide, uh, which was, you know, he's the godfather of the American field guide, he described that call as tea kettle, tea kettle, tea kettle, tea kettle. When I was learning bird songs and then I was in college, there was a TV show called Saturday Night Live. <laughs> I know it's still around, but back then they had a skit in which there was a diner. And when you went in, you ordered, and, the, and John Belushi had a counter return and he would call out, he'd say, cheeburger, 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 chip. And to me, that is the Carolina Wren. Now, here's the other part of bird songs, and that is dialects. Uh, I never heard, my ear never heard tea kettle, tea kettle, tea kettle until I moved to Pennsylvania. When I moved to Pennsylvania, it was li we lived there for a couple of years running Audubon's Nature Center, and I heard a Carolina Wren singing. I went, wow, that bird says tea kettle. Uh, the Carolina Wrens back home in Missouri and in North Carolina, to me, says cheeburger, 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 because there are different dialects in different parts of the country. Now, they're the same song, basically, but sometimes it's a little bit faster, a little bit slower, a, little, a different cadence to it. But, uh, you know, whatever your ear can hear and what you can associate with that bird's song is really important. And that's what you will, that will help is what you're going to help you learn uh, that bird song is your ear, not mine. So come up with a mnemonic for him. And of course, one of the most famous backyard birds that uh, people love to hear every spring, they're not here in the winter, is the house wren, the Jenny wren. But people love their songs um, and when they look forward to hearing it every spring when they come back. But the thing that can be described here is that that little bird has the biggest voice you can imagine. I mean, Carolina wrens are loud and they sing a lot, 
But this little guy, the amount of song that comes out of this little tiny bird. And when they, when they, the males arrive in the spring, he starts belting out that song and he goes around and on top of the bird houses and sings and sings and sings and sings, goes to the next, another one of his houses or holes in the tree and sings and sings, trying to attract that female. So that song is very, very well known um, by a lot of people. So the house wren, uh, especially if they, they nest in your backyard is one you certainly want to learn. Now, one of the groups of birds that are a little bit harder to uh, that learn by a mnemonic or you know trying to put a saying to it uh, are the are the woodpeckers. They woodpeckers are very fairly varied. They're not songbirds. Remember, songbirds are most of the birds we've talked about earlier, uh, and that is uh, they they have a more musical quality to their voices. The downy woodpecker is a, is so common, and if you feed birds, you definitely have seen them. But learning their call in the song, uh, it, you'll realize it's it's not musical. It's not a member of the songbird group. It's you know the picoids or the or the woodpeckers are have kind of unique songs or unique calls, but they're not really musical. Now that is a call. Pick, 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 pick here. That, that is classic uh, downy woodpecker. And like I talked about chickadees being in family groups and being very chatty, downy woodpeckers are in, in little family groups and they argue and bicker a lot. And that is a classic uh, uh, downy woodpecker call. Beep, 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 beep. That's why I always describe it. Do it again. The, if you notice the difference between the first one and the second one, this one's faster. So yeah, that's the difference in dialects from one recording to the other. But it's that beep, 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 beep. So there's 10 birds that you really should get to know. If you're, you want to, if you're serious about being able to learn bird songs, those will get you on the road. And we'll do a little more advanced uh, videos in the future with uh, some, maybe 10 more birds and, and do a few at a time. If you got any birds you want me to talk about, definitely send those in. But remember the Merlin app, uh, the Sibley app, both of them are fantastic additions to your, your smartphone devices and it will help you a lot if you really want to learn bird songs. So it's a really good idea for a program, bird songs, getting started. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Give us a, a like, give us a share. Please subscribe, send an idea for future programs. And until then, come on, let's talk birds.